Hi guys, it's Claris, and today we are going to do a fairly quick tutorial on how to do <clears throat> some loose, um, you guessed it, Rose of Sharon's. So uh, I just have this out here because I have a ton of them growing in my backyard right now. And these seem to be the last pretty blooms in my garden for the season. So I figured why not, let's just try and make this the uh, tutorial for this week. And then, so my hope is that you will practice this and then come Sunday we will do them again and kind of enhance the composition and do something pretty and nice. So uh, let's begin. For my colors, I am using, um, I'm going to be mixing a couple of colors and let me just show you what that will look like. Uh, this is what actually one of uh, my practice sheets. Try to make it as loose as possible, but I wasn't quite pleased with this. Uh, this was my first practice sheet. And again, you can see how it evolves from here to here. So I, I figured I really like the rounded edges as opposed to the sharp edges. And while I want to keep a lot of white space in between, so something like that, again, um, this was nice, but I just felt like the sharp edges don't quite do much for it. And again, uh, if you actually look at the floral, it's quite uh, rounded. So I don't want to do the sharp edges, even though the whole idea of that was to do the whole light and dark shadow aspect of it. So uh, yes, yeah, so for colors, I'm going to be mixing my ultramarine with... Um, the Matter Lake from St. Petersburg. For the green, I'm going to be using um, a mixture of Mars Brown with yellowish green. This is just the Matter Lake Red for the centers. And then we have another mixture of the Ultramarine and Matter Lake, except uh, this has a little more of the Matter, the Matter Lake Red as opposed to the Ultramarine Blue. So we're just gonna be fluctuating with these and using that to create a flower and then we will I'll show you how to do the the leaves as well because they're quite interesting looking great so let's begin uh, I will be using my mop brush for this and I'm just getting it ready I have my paper towel ready in case I need it <clears throat> here's my little palette I'm gonna be mixing some of the color I already have some color on here but I'm just gonna get some more on there so there's the red with a little bit of the previous purpley color that we had on there. I'm gonna get some more on here. And then I'm taking some of the blue and I'm mixing that in too. And I wanna get a decent amount of color on here so then I don't have to keep remixing and getting more. So let me just get that in here right now. So I'm just mixing more blue on the left hand side and then I'm, I'm keeping some with the with more of the red on the right hand side and let's just kind of go with that flow. All right, so I think this is a good enough mixture for now. So let's begin. So I'm gonna start off with, with that color, the left hand side color where there's more blue than the red. And I'm using my mop brush. I'm just getting it all properly mixed up here before we begin. Okay. And first things first, I'm just going to put this aside so the shadow doesn't show on the video. Then it won't be as light. All right. So we'll have the, so we're going to create the, um, the petals first. And we got to keep in mind that the center has um, the yellow. I'm not quite sure Wow, I forgot what it's called, but you know what I mean, the protruding yellow bit. So let's just keep that in mind. And you know what, just to be safe, I'm going to use a pencil and just kind of do uh, an inner circle because this is where I want the red to be. And I'm even going to lightly create um, the area where I want the protrusion to be so it can keep that area open and it doesn't even have to be that big actually. And then just to kind of have where the floor, where 
the petals will kind of be an end. I'm just going to quickly do a quick rendering drawing off that. And this is just to guide me as I do this for the tutorial, all right? Okay, fabulous. So I have my color, I'm ready to go. Uh, so first things first, I want the outsides to be a lot more rounded. And so white space in between. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the first one. Pressing down, kind of going down. Then kind of extending, doing another one, leaving some white space. Lightly going with the tip, adding another one. Then I'll take some of the reddish version off that and I'm just going to mark off some of the. Yeah, the thing about the um, mop brush is that it has a lot of, it carries a lot of water. So if you want to keep that. Um, paper towel ready, that would be handy. I'm going to do the other side now because I want some sides to be a lot more lighter than the others. Highlighting some areas, so I'm just kind of doing strokes that are that are like loose but also keeping with that shape that we've created and we want to keep that nice bit of um, um, light and darkness happening so keep going with that as we go all the way around um, I'm going to create this one here And then finally, I'm going to take some more of the purpley color and add some over here. In this area. And so now for the next bit, we're going to be creating. I'm just touch up certain areas where you feel like you need to touch them up. And so for the next bit, I'm going to be taking some of my red that I mixed and I'm going to the center and I am doing this. So clearly I need more red. I need it to be a lot darker with less water. So I can do this little motion with it. And we're just going all the way around. And from the inside up. So we can achieve that effect. So keep a lot of white space wherever you can. And then if you have areas like this where the water is pooling, just take your brush and I guess just with just water on it, just wipe off the excess or push down the color and you should be fine. Now once we've done that, we want to go ahead and go in with our um, with our yellow and for that I'm just using the cadmium lemon and I'm mixing it with a little bit of the cadmium medium the cadmium lemon medium or medium lemon rather and I just want it to be a nice soft yellow I don't want it to be too overpowering so I'm just gonna do a couple of dots in that area 
and I want to leave a lot of white space. Now, if it's still damp and it's seeping in, you might like the effect, you might not. I'll leave that up to you. I just want to take that off because I don't want it seeping in too much. Uh, that's my preference. And I'm just going to do a couple of dots in the center and then I'll take some, uh, take the same brush. I've washed off the color and I'm just using some water that's on it to kind of help spread this a little more so it's not too in your face yellow and then just leave it at that and now once that's done I'm just going to use the same brush um, actually I'm going to use this brush to just kind of touch up some areas and corners um, so for instance like I just want this area to be a lot more like fluffy to have an indication of like this is where it kind of turns around and ends. I'm giving it a couple of dots here and there. And pretty much like giving it some shape. And then finally when, when that's done, you might want to dab at it if you feel like it's too bright or dark um, and then once that's done we're going back with our number four and we're going to get a darker version of what we have here the purple and just using the tip of our brush we're going to slowly draw some linear lines and so we're going to do that in the areas where it's dry and this will define the petals some more and kind of show us where one ends and another begins and so that's the whole point of this exercise here so you can have different variations of the lines, uh, the colors I mean. I'm having some yeah I'm having some of them kind of go out of the area to kind of touch the little bits and bobs that we painted on the outskirts of these. And I want the lines to be thin. They don't have to connect if you're having a hard time connecting them. Uh, this area is now finally dried, I believe. So I can go ahead and create those lines there. And then finally finish off with a couple over here. And there we go. We have our loose rendition of a Rose of Sharon. Um, now, uh, let's move on to the leaves. And for the leaves, again, let's just mix some of the color. I'm going to mix my Mars Brown. Okay, clearly I need more on this brush. There we go, Mars Brown. And I am mixing some of the greenish, yellowish green. So that's too much yellowish green. I'm going to put more of that Mars Brown in here so I can get the kind of color that I want, which is more of an olive kind of reddish green, warm green, so to speak. Yeah. Okay, so I have this. I'm going to use this because I like this consistency and color. So next thing we're going to do is mix using the number four we're going to draw a sprig so it gives us direction for the leaf. <clears throat> so let's do it over here this way and I'm going to do one leaf. I'm going to do this leaf over here 
and we're going to do it in three strokes sort of. Um, so just dipping the tip in water so that I can get a more fluid um, consistency. I'm going to do my first stroke, dipping in water again so it can blend better. Second stroke, going down towards this area. Then I'll do a third right here and then a fourth right here. And see, notice how I'm leaving that white space in between. Um, I want to do that because it gives a nice illusion of light and dark. And I'm going back in and adding dabs of the green, the same green that I've used to just kind of enhance how this leaf looks. Again, let's just do it again so you can see how I do that. Um, let's have a leaf coming out this way. So we'll do one stroke, two strokes, then a third, and then a fourth. And you can darken it up like I was mentioning previously. So I'm just getting some more of that green and adding it right in the center and where they connect. All right, so simple, easy peasy. And now we'll do a bud. Uh, the buds are fairly, fairly simple. What I normally do is, so I'm just going to get a slightly lighter version, lighter in the sense more water, less color, onto the same brush, and I'm going to create an oval shape, leaving some white space in between, and adding the darker color to the bottom, like I've been saying all this time. And then finally, I'm going to take a little bit more uh, green, and by green I mean the um, the actual green from St. Petersburg. I'm just a little bit of it on the tip of my number four. I'm mixing it in with the green I already have. I just want a darker, slightly darker green to create the little sprigs that encompass the bud. And then just kind of go ahead and add them on. Now this is still damp so if I do a line in there it's going to blend but this is a loose style painting so it's okay if you do that and it just has a hint of that it's okay if you want to wait for it to dry up and then do that it's entirely up to you. I'm just kind of going ahead and doing that because I feel like I can just do it now. So there we go we have that and now these happen normally in sprigs of like several sprigs all together so I'm just going to add another one just so you can see how that's done again <clears throat> and so Sunday we could probably do something that's like um, using a sprig of these to create a wreath or something decorative um, with these elements that we've learned so my hope is that you will spend the rest of I guess the next few days in just practicing these techniques uh, and these methods that I have outlined here in this video and so that when Sunday rolls around and we are painting together it's easier for you you know how to mix the colors I'm going to use the exact same things that I've mentioned in this video for Sunday so then we're not having a hard time adjusting again um, but yeah, it's super simple. It's just a matter of finding your comfort zone, um, leaving enough of white space, uh, having the right colors to kind of overlay and whatnot. And uh, yeah, so hope you guys like this. Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought. Um, send me your images on um, Instagram and Facebook. If you like my videos, please do consider subscribing to my channel. And also consider sharing this, um, these videos if you find them helpful. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And I will see you guys on Sunday. Bye.